Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Never Alone Homestead. My name is Cammie, and welcome back to my kitchen again. Well, guys, I've got 19 and a half jars of sweet potatoes that I've canned so far. I got seven into the canner right at the moment that'll be ready to be taken out in about 45 minutes. And then I have probably maybe two more batches, and I want to bring you along in my kitchen to show you how easy it is to can sweet potatoes so that you can have sweet potatoes all year long. I've already opened up a jar and uh, I couldn't resist it and they were they was really good. So I want to show you my technique on how to can sweet potatoes and uh, I think that you'll really enjoy this video. So come along into my kitchen. So the first thing we want to do is wash the potatoes. I've already got these washed right here, but the best way to wash them is to take just a, take just a brush and scrub them. Now, if you're getting them out of the garden, you do not want to do this uh, until you're ready to can them. So really simple technique. Go through and scrub them real good. And if your potatoes have got a lot of dirt in, on them, then what I do is I just wash them outside and then I bring them in and I take my stopper and I fill the sink up and I just wash them around, let the water out, do it about two or three times to get as much dirt off and then I just take my brush and just give them a good scrub. So the next stage is, is we're going to put them in a pot. And we're going to fill it up with water. And then what we're going to do, we're going to put this on the stove and let it come to a boil. Now, Ball says to boil your potatoes about 10 minutes. I find out if I boil sweet potatoes or white potatoes, they end up becoming mushy because when you're canning them, they still continue to cook it. So when they're in here, once this boiling starts taking place, these potatoes are starting to cook. The purpose of putting them in this pot is to get these peelings to soften up so that we can peel them and then we'll take and peel the skins off of these and cut them up and then we won't be long, but we're ready to put them into the canner. So we're just going to fill this up and then we're going to put it on the stove. So the potatoes are on here and they are starting to boil. I don't let mine really go to a rapid boil. I, I have done that, but the main objective here is just to get these skins to loosen up. You can also take a vegetable peeler and peel these potatoes, but this is the very simple, the easiest method I could think of, of how to get your potatoes peeled. Um, here I have my water ready. Now, when you fill your jars up, you can just fill it up with hot water or you can make your own syrup. Here I have made my own syrup and your syrup consistency of how sweet you want it is, is up to you. I have actually put in six quarts of water in here and two and a half cups of sugar. Now also uh, with this, the first batch, I only put two cups. So you don't have to put any sugar. It's, it, that's really up to you. When I put the uh, sh sugar in here, of course the, it, the heat's turned up a little bit more than what it is now. And I just stir it up and takes just a, a few seconds and if the sugar has melted. Now when this is, uh, these potatoes are ready to peel and put in a jar, I'll have this a little bit hotter. 
I've already got my lids over here, my rings over here, and my jar ready. I have my jars ready over here. They've been washed and they've been sterilized. And so everything is on go. Only thing I'm waiting on now is for these potatoes to get just a little bit hotter. And usually what I do is I just look in the water and see it boiling. And I set my timer for two minutes. Then I'm going to take them over to the sink and spoon them out. Because the longer these potatoes stay into the water, they're just cooking. Ball says boil them for 10 minutes. But I find out that my potatoes end up just being mashed. And I don't, I don't want my potatoes, mashed potatoes, white potatoes. I, I don't want to mash unless that's the consistency on which I want them to be. So we'll wait a few uh Probably about another minute and I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer here because it is starting to boil a little bit but I'm gonna set my timer and uh, I'm gonna watch this and like I said once it starts to boil I'm gonna take it off the heat take it to the sink spoon those potatoes in the sink because those potatoes are still cooking even though they're out of the water so now we're just gonna take these potatoes out they're hot. Because they're too hot to handle. You can't peel them like this because they're just they're just too hot. So I like to just put them in the sink. Get some of this hot water. Stops the cooking process. In the meantime, I've also cut the heat up onto the jars, rings, and, uh, and lids, the pot. I also cut the syrup up a little bit so it could be heating up. These are hot. Let's set this aside over here. So now, what we got to do is we got to start peeling these. Now this is one of the top potatoes, so it's not at the bottom of the pot, but you see how easy, and I always have my bowl set near me so I can just go ahead and do it like this. And you want to cut out any bad spots, go ahead and get them cut out. Now this one's uh, my knife is not that sharp. I don't keep my knife sharp because if I do, I'll end up cutting my finger, and there's nothing like in the process of doing something other than your finger starts bleeding. And plus two, then you got to continue on with the day, and you, know, you get food all in that cut, and it's just not good. So I don't keep my knives that cut. This looks like where an ant bit at. I'm just going to cut it out. I also have a, a bowl of hot water over here, and um, I like to cut my potatoes and just put them in the water because if you leave them out, they're going to turn brown. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one right here. This one's a hard one. You see, I don't like my potatoes to work to the point that you know, they're all mushy and stuff. I like to look at my potatoes, see if there's anything else I need to cut out. I don't like how that does. Let me scrap. Yep. Cut that off. Okay, so now the size is totally up to you. I like to cut mine in chunks because I know these potatoes are going to be um, cooking more in those jars. I'm just going to put that in the water over there so they won't turn brown. So I cut mine in the chunks.
rough looking tater. I like to cut them in half. Just a little place right there and cut it off. And all these scraps will just go to the chickens or compost. And I cut it in half again. Whoops, I thought I cut that one. I'm going to take this and just dump it in my bowl. So when I get these finished peeling, I'll, we'll be right back and show the next step. So one of the things I want to show you is that um, the white there, or yellowish, this potato shows it really well. Now, what, however you leave your potato, that's what it's going to look like in your jars. On this potato right here, I have to cut a little bit deeper because I don't want that. I don't want that, uh, I just, I just, that part I just don't want. So, I just take my knife and skim it about it. You want to make sure you get all the bruises off and stuff like that because however your potato looks, now that's, that's how it's going to look in your jar. So I kind of go around and get all that other part up, off. And there we go. Really putting it into the water makes it so much easier because if you've ever peeled uh, sweet potatoes before, naturally, uh, they're just hard to peel. Not those brown spots. I prefer this over taking a potato peeler or a vegetable peeler. And any day, this is so much easier. Now, if these potatoes stayed in the water maybe another minute, this, it would be a lot easier, but you've got to know that these potatoes are going to continue cooking into your canner. Alright, so I always look over my potatoes, see possibly something else I'm going to nip off. It looks like bruising right there. I'm going to nip it off. And once you put them in that water, it also softens them up enough that you can cut them like this. If anybody's ever cut potatoes, sweet potatoes, they know that it's, they're just hard to cut. This makes it easy, fast. Now I'll put these in the water. So I just heard this thing, the thing pop down. So these carrots are, I mean carrots, <laughs> sweet potatoes are ready to come out. So you always want to hold it away from your face. You don't want to hold it to your face. Give it a minute or, you know, a few seconds. And then you're just going to put it down. I always like to try to put mine, well, I know it's not going to fall. reason I want to go ahead and take these out because when I put those in a jar, I've got to have some place to put them and I need to go ahead and get the water ready in this canner for the other ones to go in. If you time this, if you work at it, you can just do just like I did. You just kind of go back to back. All right. So there they are. Seven more. 
So let me get this canner with some, I'm going to put some uh, fresh water in it or put some, uh, take some of this water out of here, cool this down some because this water in this can canner right here is just too hot now for me to put, even though the water is going to be hot to put in those jars and the jars, you know, they're going to be hot. Um, this water in here is way too hot. So what I'm going to do is dip some of this out and put some cold water in it, get this temperature down so it will be ready. Put it on the stove, cut the temperature up so I can get ready to put the other jars in the canner. So everything is, is ready to go. As you can see the steam and uh, the jars jars ready, got the lids in there, the syrup is ready, just water and uh, and sugar. Like I said, the, sh the sugar is up to, up to you. I put two and a half cups, two cups, two and a half cups. I find out two and a half cups pretty good or just two cups. Also, while I was getting those uh, sweet potatoes out of the canner, I noticed that potatoes were already starting to brown. So what I did, I just put a, a plate over it and mashed those potatoes down into the water. Let it take that plate off. And if your water, you know, if it was a little bit of time, your water will start turning brown. Sometimes I'll just take, uh, you know, run some warm water and pour it out. It's just normal for that to happen. What I'm going to do now is just get my jar. And while I'm getting my jar, I'm going to put another one in there. So you got hot jars, hot liquid. These are really warm. And since I'm doing chunks, you see, you can kind of notice it's kind of turning a little bit brown. It's not going to hurt anything. I mean, you know, it's just going to show that in your jar. No big deal. So, well, since I'm doing chunks, I like to just do a few at a time because I find out that they fall right into place. And then I take my little debubbler here, little measuring stick here. And I kind of just mash it down a little bit. I'll just put just a few at a time because they'll fall right into place. I'll take the mashes down in there because that does kind of help them to get into place. Some people cut slices. Uh, I just prefer to do it this way. I found out it works best for me. And so, whoops, got too many. And so when you get to the top, you'll find out that you'll, you're going to have to kind of um, put them in a position. It's your food. So my hands are clean. Um, they kind of probably look dirty, but I've been canning all day long with these potatoes. And these potatoes will stain your fingers. That's what, if you see it, that's, that's what's going on. So now I got that in there. And uh, let me see, I got this one big potato right there. I don't know if I can get it. Let me try this. Yeah, position it a little bit. Sometimes you got to position them a little bit at the top. And uh, so now I'm going to get the syrup. Syrup is real hot. And you're going to fit, fill it up to one inch from your top, which will be that little bottom ring right there. If you, and you can use this and see that it's one inch. Now, I always, always, I'll take a paper towel, you can use a rag. I take a little bit of vinegar, I have vinegar on this, and I always wipe my lids. Also, in my canner... When I put my water in there, I always put about two tablespoons, just a little big dash, a little dash of vinegar in there. It keeps my jars clear. It keeps the food debris from sticking to it, grease and stuff like that. So now that I did that, all I got to do now is get a ring and a lid. Put it on there and finger tight like that. And now we're going to set it into the canner.
We're going to grab a jar. We're going to put another jar in the pot so it can be getting hot. Take our funnel, fry some potatoes. And really this process, it just, it doesn't take very long. It's time you do it about two times, it's like a snap. It really is. You can whip through this in no time. There's some big potatoes right there. These are big ones. People say you want to get them all about the same size. When I cut them, they're just about all the same size. But, you know, uh, like I said, once you, once you start doing this, you, you'll you just figure out what is the best method for you. So, I'm at the top. I need to try to... Oh, and I forgot to debubble that other one. So, let me take it back out. Take it back out. I, for, I try to debubble, and this is one of the things that I forget about for some reason. But sweet potato, potatoes are hard to get in there. Sometimes you can you can put this in there, and you can start seeing some bubbles coming up. Sometimes I can do it and not see any bubbles. But it's a good method just to do. If there's any air pockets in there, it will. Um, and this also helps sometimes to get those potatoes to get in there place if there's any gaps but usually if I put two or three in there um two or three so I mean I'm gonna shake my my liquid I'm gonna add just a little bit more because I've kind of splashed a little bit out so I'm just fill it back up that little rim take my paper towel again wipe that top off I'm gonna put this ring and lid back in there. Grab me a hot one. Put it on there. Finger tight. All right. Grab this one. Still hot. Grab me some syrup. Fill it up. And yeah, that's about it. Pour my syrup back in the pot. De try to debubble. I usually try to hold a potato down on top. That kind of helps it out, keeps them in position, but you're just trying to, and that's some hot stuff. So, okay, that's good. I didn't even see any bubbles come up. Wipe my top off. Grab me a ring and a lid. And then we will continue on. So, once you get your counter filled up, grab a jar here. Once you get your counter filled up, then you're going to put the lid on it. You're going to let the, um, you put the lid on it, you're going to let the, is that it vent for 10 minutes and steam coming out of your vent and then you're going to set your timer I always set my timer it just makes it so simple and then you're going to let that vent for 10 minutes once it vents then you're going to uh, put your weight on there you're going to you watch you're going to stand by you're not going to walk off you're going to watch it with the uh, PSI to raise up your pressure you need to know what your PSI is into your area. I just heard a, a ring uh, jar pop. So you want you want to know what your PSI is into your area. Mine is 10 pounds of pressure. So I will let that pressure go up to 10 pounds. You got to watch it because you can, you know sometimes it'll crawl up. Crawl, the pressure will crawl. I can say it crawl up. Be slow to get up there to that PSI um, to the PSI number that you need, and um, and then. If you walk off, you can just forget it, forget about it, and that's not good. You, you want to make sure that, that that stays at the PSI it's supposed to be. If it goes higher, you need to cut it down. But you put you, you let that steam, you put your weight on it, you let that PSI climb up, the pressure climb up to 
your area minus 10 pounds of pressure so it's going to go up to 10 pounds of pressure and then once it gets to 10 pounds of pressure i'm going to cut it down now my canner is on high at the moment and so because i'm filling these up jars up when i have the um when i have the lid on i put my let it steam uh let it vent and i'm trying to do this and talk at the same time i put the lid on i let it uh start building up pressure on the inside it's going to steam it's going to vent out you're going to let that vent out for 10 minutes you're going to set your timer and, and once the timer goes off um then you're going to put your weight on there the, you got to watch it because you're going to go up to your whatever your psi is in, into your area and mine is 10 pounds of pressure so you've got to really watch it because it'll keep climbing and once it gets to that that psi of 10 pressure then I'm going to, because it's, still, it's on high, I'm going to turn it down to probably about two or three, still watching it. And then I'm going to also set my timer. Now, these sweet potatoes are going to go for 90 minutes, one hour and 30 minutes, one hour and 30. You do not want to change your time on that. I mean, you can change your time as far as, uh, you know, like, the, like I said, two minutes for, for the peelings. That's fine. But on, when it comes to pressure canning, you always want to follow the regulations of what they say of the cooking time, the pressuring time, processing time. So, I'm going to wipe the lid off of this and grab me a ring and a lid. And you, you just want to watch it. You, you got to keep your eye on it. You, you can get distracted. I've gotten distracted being in the kitchen trying to straighten up. It was just crawling up there. And... um. I'm gonna finger tight this. I call this finger tight because it's, I'm not putting too much pressure. Finger finger tight. Um, I was busy, got busy in here. It was just slow crawling up there to the PSI, the pressure, and and then uh, it went over. I just got distracted. Well, I cut the the temperature down. But see, that's this shows you you can do this a thousand times and still forget. The best thing to do is just stand there at the can can canner. At your counter and uh, watch it you don't want to walk away you don't you just get get distracted so watch it and then after you got your pressure the amount that you want then you still want to watch it because it could go down it can go up you just want to make sure that temperature is right because usually when that temperature is right it once it gets regulated it'll stay like that pretty much we still want to keep your eye on it uh, constantly checking it, constantly, constantly watching it. Make sure that in your canner you got the amount of right of uh, water. Uh, mine takes a uh, three quarts. Now most people have in their canner has a mark. Mine doesn't have a mark. I just always put three quarts of water in my canner. A little bit of dash of vinegar, and um, and that and and then that's what I do. So <laughs> okay, so. Uh, talk and do this at the same time I'm trying to make sure I stay focused that I don't miss a step here so if I miss a step leave me a comment in the be below um yeah if you got any comments got any questions just leave me a comment in the, in the below and see you see that I am trying to get these sweet potatoes sometimes you just got to get them aligned up my hands are clean my jars are, are clean so a little bit more there we go that one I'm just gonna take out you know I think I'll just take that one out I don't like them too far at the top anyhow and if you got less liquid at the when you know when you after you can them you got find that you got less liquid that's okay it's it's, it's fine um, sometimes it's like that when you can. Sometimes it just gets air bubbles in there and, you know, you just end up with less liquid. Sometimes with me doing this right here, I'll move these potatoes around and find out I need to add more, more liquid. Just like I do right now, I need to add more liquid. 
That's another reason I'm trying to move those potatoes around. All right. Get me a lid and ring. It's getting hot in this kitchen. I've been cooking these potatoes all day. That was one upside down. So now it's time to put the lid on. The temperature is set on high. And this is that little vent. You'll see steam coming out of there. It won't take very long. This water's going to heat up. Pressure's going to build up. Steam's going to start coming out of there. You're going to set your timer for 10 minutes. Once that timer goes off, you're going to put your weight on there. Here goes my weight. You're going to put your weight on there and uh, always try to find your weight. Don't, you know, know where your weight's at. Um, I always make sure my weight is sitting near me so I, I, I'm ready for it. So once that pressure uh, steam vents, the, the timer goes off, you're going to put your, you're going to put your weight on there. And then this uh, pressure is going to rise up and you can be sure to watch it, stand there and watch it. Once it gets to your PSI, mine's going to be 10 pounds of pressure. And then I'm going to put the, um, the weight on there. I'm going to turn my temperature down to about two or three. You got to know your stove. So with my stove is around two or three, uh, two or three. And, uh, I'm going to set my timer for, one hour and 30 minutes or 90 minutes then once the timer goes off you're going to of course cut your stove off uh this is a flat stop flat stove top so sometimes i try to move it over you can't slide it across because it'll scratch the glass all right if you can't just just cut the time or just cut the temperature off and it'll take about 30 minutes and this temperature will go back down to zero you're here, this little thing right here, flap down, and then you might want to wait about five more minutes, and then you're going to take this off right here. That lets you know that there's, um, the steam is out. You won't see no steam. It'll just, you know, be fine. It won't be nothing coming out of it. And then when you take this lid off, be sure to turn it that way because you don't want to turn it towards your face. You can get steam burn because there's still going to be some steam in there. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you so much. If you have any comments, leave them below. Shoot me a comment. Uh, just leave me a comment anyhow. Say hey. I appreciate all the comments. It's such an inspiration to reply back to people who make comments where they just saying hello or whatever. You know, we're building relationships. We're building friendships. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you all my subscribers. I appreciate you so much. Uh, I hope that you learned something from this video. And guys, remember to make it a great day. Sometimes you can lay your hands over here and start feel that steam. I don't feel any yet, but it's, it's not long from it. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great day.